Hey folks, it's JD here, and today we are looking at this. This is the Hubson H502S. Now, this is very much the big brother of the H502E. So let's open it up, have a little look, and see what new features come with this particular copter. So let's open the, the two flaps down the bottom. A oh, little bit tricky. And then from there, this is what we got. There's our quadcopter. Okay, perfect. Let's move her to one side. Let's open up the box. And inside we find a transmitter. Look at this. So much different to the other Hubson's transmitter. It's unbelievable. We'll come on to this in a little while. Also, we've got two spare part packs in there as well. So, let's take these out and find out what's in them first. And then we can carry on with setting up our quadcopter. Right, so in spare part pack number one, perfect. Propellers, screws, screwdriver, and USB charger. So clearly USB charger is for the battery. The battery itself, by the way, if you don't find it inside one of these packs, it's going to be where, the, where it was in the other Hubson. There we are. It's just in the, in the back there. So what we're going to need to do is take out everything. Now, as you'll notice, they will have given you eight propellers, four to fit now, and then four then to fit at a later date, should you damage any of these propellers. So what we need are two letter A propellers. So the letters are just on the front of the propellers there. Two letter A, and then two letter B. There we are. Perfect. And then we can pop these other propellers away because we don't need those today. Lovely. That was spare part pack number one. So let's have a look at the second one. Inside there, you get an FPV visor, which you can attach to your transmitter to ensure you can see everything properly and you get no lens glare or sun glare on your FPV screen, which then may uh, harbour your, your, your flight. So we don't need that for today. So I'm just going to pop that away. Right, let's get on to the assembly of our quadcopter. Well, a couple of months ago, we did the Hubson H502E, which is another quadcopter, same family as this. Um, so if you've already watched the video on how to put the propellers on, it's exactly the same. As far as that goes, there is no difference. On these uh, motor arms, you're going to have these little rubber bungs. So you're going to want to remove these. There's four in total. That then will allow you access onto the motor arms. Now, on the motor arms go the propellers. So on the propeller arms of the quadcopter, you'll notice they have letters A and A, B and B. Now, those letters must correspond with the letters on your propellers. Otherwise, the quadcopter isn't going to fly. So, what we need to do is find both our letter A's, these two. And on these, now in order to fit these properly, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a little look on one of the propellers. There's going to be a little line. So you've got num a letter A there and letter A there. It shows you the direction of which the propeller turns. But there's also a little line. Now that line is very important because on the motor arm, now it's probably this camera probably isn't going to pick this up, so I do apologize. But on this motor arm here, you've got a semicircle and then a line. And it's the line on the propeller that you want to match up with the line on the motor arm. It's very easy to see as soon as you look down at the propeller. Uh, sorry, at the motor arm, you'll see that straight away. So you want to marry that up with the line on here. So make sure you've got the right arm, the right propeller, and then it just slots in. It's as easy as that. If you feel some resistance, then you've done it wrong. Just remove the propeller, double check to see where the line is, and to see where the indent is on the propeller arm. Sorry, the motor arm. So many different arms. 
So there we go. That is A and A fitted. Now once you've fitted, what you'll notice is there shouldn't be a gap. You've got plastic here and plastic there, and there is no gap at all. If you've got a gap, you fitted it wrong, take it off and have another little look again. It can take, it can be a little bit fiddly, but once you've done it correct for one propeller, you'll just bang on the rest of them and there won't be any problems whatsoever. So now we've come to do propeller uh, number, uh, propeller letter B. So in the same way, there's your letter B and there's your little line on there as well. So that line just slots into the line with the propeller, with the propeller arm, sorry. And there we go, once again, bang, that's it. As easy as that, no resistance. That's it, your propellers are on. Now you've got to screw them in. So you've got three different lots, sorry, two lots of screws in here. One's a black pair, one's a silver pair. The black pair screws in to letter A and the silver pair screws in to letter B. So what we'll do is like normal, we'll screw them in, but we, we'll only do them thumb tight and then once we've done all four, we'll go back around and just double check that they're all screwed in properly and that nothing's going to happen untoward when we're flying her in the next couple of days. So there's the screws. Let's pop them there. And then we're going to attach these screws. Now, obviously, I don't expect you to watch this, so I'll fast forward this bit. Uh, and then we'll get this done. And there we go. All four now screwed in. What I will say is be very careful when you do go to screw in the, the propellers into the motor arms, you get one screw extra, which is what I just put back into that pack now. But um, yeah, so be very careful uh, just in case you drop one because they're so small you will lose them. So there we go. That's all done. That's all dusted. Beautiful. So then, a couple of things about this quadcopter. I'm not going to go into great detail as I went into a lot of detail on the last one that we looked at. Um, and this quadcopter doesn't really differ too much. It's a little bit slimline. It's a little bit smaller than the other Hubsun. Uh, but as far as features go, it holds exactly the same features. So you've got an SD card underneath it. The battery is directly in the back of the bay door here. This is a 7.4 volt, 610 milliamp hour battery. It takes between 50 and an hour and 10 minutes to charge. Um, these batteries you can buy in bulk from pretty much anywhere. Amazon, Banggood, Gearbest. I've got three for my original Hubsun. Um, so I'm going to be using that one as well, which has got the same voltage. It's got the same uh, milliamp hour, same wattage uh, for this one as well. So I've got another two batteries that will fit this one and power it perfectly. Also, don't forget, there's a camera on the front of it as well. Obviously, one of its main features. There's a little bit of polythene on there. There's a little bit of cellophane. So you may want to just take that off just before you fly it, just to ensure you get crisp uh, pictures. Also, under the side, let's not forget, this is the same design as the other Hubsons, in which there's little holes on the landing sprigs. When the propellers turn, sand and grit can get sucked in these little holes. So make sure when you take off, you're taking off on a properly flat surface, like tarmac or somewhere very safe very secure when nothing gets sucked into the motors and where the motors aren't going to damage. And there's the SD card slot, just in case you hadn't seen it. So there we have it. That is the Hubson H502S. But now we come to the very important part, the transmitter. This transmitter is totally different from the last one that came with the Hubson 502E. So let's have a little look and go into some of the features now before we take her out. Here's the transmitter. <laughs> it's a beast. Uh, so as standard, what you'll have is you'll have this little caution label on there. It basically just says not to take off with any less than six satellites. So this quadcopter and this transmitter both have GPS modules. Uh, this quadcopter does have altitude hold in which the GPS from the satellite will lock your position so the quadcopter won't move or will move very slightly rather. Uh, likewise, with the GPS module in here, the quadcopter has got the ability to follow this transmitter. Follow the signal and follow exactly where you are. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend that you take your eyes off the quadcopter as you're flying. Don't forget, you have to remain safe at all times. 
and ensure that everything and everyone around you is safe as well. Uh, but it has got that function, which we'll, we will be testing out when we take it out into the field. So a couple of other things as well. Um, you've got a couple of extra switches here, which you don't get on a lot of quadcopters, um, and you certainly didn't have on the H502E. So you've got two switches up here. These two switches, when they are down, they are off. When they are up, they are on. This left-hand one is for GPS. This one is for return to home. So when you've got GPS on, GPS is enabled. When you've turned it off, what you're actually doing is you're turning off the GPS module inside the transmitter and inside uh, the quadcopter, and you're only allowing this quadcopter to use altitude hold using the built-in barometer. So as you will know from any other quadcopter that doesn't have GPS, that can mean that she is a little bit unstable and the wind will move her from side to side, forwards and back. So just be on the safe side should you do that. Uh, myself, when I take her out, it's going to be GPS on all the time. A couple of other buttons. This button here on the left, that one allows you to take photos. This button here on the right allows you to take video. Obviously, it'll save itself to the GPS, so to, to the SD card built into the quadcopter. Uh, your trim buttons, pretty standard. Uh, on and off button, again, pretty standard. Uh, but this FPV screen, obviously this does give you greater insight into the world of quadcopters. It does allow you to see what this quadcopter is looking at. Um, so you can fly a little, more, a, li a little more safely and you can fly a little more precisely. So with, as, with us saying that, I'm going to put a couple of batteries in here. And then we're going to turn around and we're going to have a quick little look at the screen. Four AA batteries is what you need for this FPV screen. On the underside, you've got your standard battery bay door. Then, using the diagrams marked on the battery, sorry, on the transmitter casing itself, place the batteries in the correct way. This can be a little bit tricky on this one. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Lovely. Now then, when we turn her on, here we go. Screen active. So let's go through a couple of little bits. We're we'll, looking at this again when we take her out in a little bit more in depth. So don't worry if I don't cover everything right now. Top left hand corner, sorry, sorry, this is how I'm looking at it. Top right hand corner is the battery of this transmitter. When the quadcopter is on, on this particular corner over here, that's going to be the battery power of the quadcopter. You've got GPS, which is enabled. You've got your longitude and your latitude. And likewise, when you move your tran when you move your analog uh, controllers, your analog sticks, you will notice this longitude and latitude in the corner here will move also. That just tells you exactly how much power you, you are putting through uh, if you can't do it by feel, but if you can if you can do it by sight, then that will give you a good insight into what to do. You can also, uh, there is a hidden main menu on this transmitter as well. So on the left analog stick, push it down and long press in the right. Then you'll get this main menu where you can go through. You can alter the frequency from 5.8. You can set sensitivity of the controllers. You can set the manual. You can fly with when there's no GPS. So if there's no satellites or if you lose satellites, then she will fly normally with the analog, um, with the barometer built in for altitude hold, as we looked at earlier. Uh, this setting, the, the fly with no GPS, that's on as standard. So she doesn't come crash into the ground. And because the quadcopter has a USB port in the back, you can then use that to upload new official firmware from Hubson. And you can see the version of it there. And then right at the bottom, you've just got exit. So there we go. So that's just a quick look into the controller and uh, and a couple of little things on the screen. Obviously, when the when the quadcopter is on, you will see a lot more, and we will be looking at that again when we take it out in the next couple of days. So, folks, there we have it. Look at that feature full. So we've got follow me function, GPS, uh, altitude hold, uh, headless mode, ability to take video and photos. Also, one thing I did neglect to say, there are two ports on the side here of the transmitter. With those ports, you can plug in a virtual reality headset, or goggles rather. 
So if you've got FPV goggles, you can take them out and you can see exactly what this copter is seeing, but from the altitude you're seeing, and you're flying, not just from the screen. So there we are, folks. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to like this video. Give us a thumbs up if you have. That all means the world. Thank you ever so much. So join us in the next couple of days when we're going to take this out. And we're going to be putting her through her steps. And seeing exactly how she flies and how she handles. And how that follow me function works as well. So then my friends, until then, happy flying.